So in this video, what we're going to be talking about is Samson's Nazarite vow. So if you read the Bible, basically from a conventional standpoint, which most people kind of do today, which is kind of like from left to right. Now, what I want to do in this video is basically take a look at what it says about the Nazarite vow and obviously kind of look at how Samson did or didn't do in regards to keeping his Nazarite vow. So the first thing I want to do in this video is just quite clearly and, um, and succinctly identify that Samson was in fact a Nazarite. OK, and we can get that from Judges 13, um, starting at verse 5. We see here, this is an angel talking to Samson's mother at the time, who was actually barren. It says, For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto, unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Okay? And it goes on with the story. I'll just read one more verse, which is a couple of verses down, which is seven, where it says, But he said unto me, this is her relaying it to her husband. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son. And now drink no wine, nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. OK, so we get some interesting context there. So first, we see the angel telling Samson's mother at the time, look, you're going to have a son, OK, even though you're barren right now. He's going to be a Nazarite. And then he basically says, look, a razor can't touch his head, basically. And he basically says some other things. And when she's relaying it to her husband, what does she say? She says she isn't able to drink wine or strong drink because the baby is going to be a Nazarite from the womb. OK. And she also says until the day of his death. OK, which is quite interesting. So what we need to do now is go back to numbers. And number six is where the key doctrine for a Nazarite vow is and I want to read a couple of verses and highlight a couple of different things so number six and verse two it starts and says speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them when either man or woman shall separate to vow a vow of a Nazarite to separate unto the Lord okay so first thing we can identify here is this wasn't subject to men only a man or a woman could take this vow okay verse three he shall separate from wine and strong drink and shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink. And neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dried. So there's a list of things they have to stay away from. Um, generally, people just highlight they can't drink wine and all that kind of stuff. But you saw some of the other things um, that are highlighted there. OK, look also, it says for all the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree from the kernels even to the husk in case of more details and look what it says verse 5 all the days of the vow of his separation there shall no razor come upon his head until the days be fulfilled in the which he separateth unto the lord he shall be holy shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow so what does that say so while he's undertaking or she's undertaking this vow they cannot cut their head that's what was obviously similar to what we read in judges a moment ago so they can't cut their head they have to stay away from wine and strong drink and loads of different other things. They can't eat certain things that grow on the vine and other stuff like that, okay? Um, that are made of the vine tree um, from the kernels even to the husk. And look what it says in verse 6. All the days that he separates unto the Lord, he shall come at no de dead body. So can't go around any dead body because it, he'll become unclean. Oh, many. Okay, look what it says. He shall not make himself unclean for his father or for his mother, for his brother or for his sister. When they die, because the consecration of his God upon his head. So even if your closest family die, okay, that isn't an excuse for you to now go and get close to those dead bodies, etc. Um, because you become unclean and your Nazareth vow will be broken. Okay, I advise you to read basically just down to about verse 21 where it goes through all the, the detail okay but for the, the point of this video i've kind of got the brunt the case of what we need to cover so let's go back to judges now and see how samson fares so what i'm going to do is basically highlight certain parts in this story which are applicable to um today's study so starting at judges 14 okay now for what we need to talk about we know some of the key things about the Nazarite vow okay which is um some of the things the angel talked about so no wine or strong drink okay we read from number six they can't come near any dead bodies um if they do um they have to shave their hair on the seventh day um, and bring an offering on the eighth day etc but those days that separation day has gone um they can't eat anything of the vine all of these different kind of things now let's kind of see here the first thing i'm going to highlight is from judges 14 verse 6 okay and it says 
And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And what he's talking about here, if you pick it up in verse 5, is he's on his way down to meet his future wife, basically. Um, and a young lion attacks him. And it says, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he basically rips the lion in pieces as he would like a baby lamb. And nothing in his hand, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. Now, I remember when I actually um, kind of stumbled upon this. I um, read this for years. And that one this particular time, I kind of said to myself, why are we hearing about this really? So why is this now important? Well, he killed an animal. Okay, The animal was dead. So he was next to a dead body. Now, some people, and even me myself, I look at this and say to myself, Numbers wasn't extremely specific in the sense that could the Nazarite vow only be applicable to to men and women? So if a man dies or a woman dies, then that's what it's talking about. It's not really talking about animals. Okay, um, it could be. Okay, that's something to consider. But if it isn't, then at this moment in time, very early in what we know about Samson, his Nazarite vow was broken, and that was something that was huge. Okay, from what we read in Judges 13, which is actually really um, big. Okay, then we go down a couple verses, verse 8, and this is the, the even bigger scenario here. It says, And after a time he returned to take her, talking about his wife, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. Okay, and behold, a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. So he comes back a different time and he says, you know what, let me go and see that dead lion. Okay? So we've already read the numbers. You're not supposed to go to any dead bodies. But more so to the point, look what he does next, nine. And he took thereof in his hands and went on eating and came to his father and mother and he gave them. And they did eat. But he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. And again, I read that verse thinking to myself, why is it so significant that he didn't tell his mum and dad that where he got the honey from? And as it all started to come full circle, started to realize, oh, okay, they were the ones that would have told him he's under a Nazarite vow. He's taking this honey from the carcass from a dead lion that he's actually killed. So this is potentially two different scenarios where his Nazarite vow could have actually been struck off, okay? Um, but he eats the honey, goes on about his business, and then obviously goes to give his mum and his father the honey as well. And they eat it and he doesn't tell them this whole situation. Okay. And at this point, I started looking at Samson's story completely different. Okay. Um, and as I was actually even preparing this video, um, one of the things that came into my mind, which I haven't thought about before, is the Nazarite vow indicates that you shouldn't come near any dead body. But what we've seen already, and what we're going to see through Samson's, is a lot of activity with dead bodies. Okay, And I started looking at Samson's story as a, as a story of extreme grace on God's part. Okay, Because I believe it's quite clear that in so many different aspects, there's so many different questionable places in Samson's life that we look at and we say, well, he's breaking this vow. Or isn't he breaking his vow here? So the next thing I want to talk about comes from verse 19, and it says, And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon, and slew thirty men of them, and took their spoil, and gave change of garments unto them, which expounded the riddle. And his, and his anger was kindled, and he went up to his father's house. So this is after, um, and I advise you read the story, okay? He obviously gives out a riddle at his feast. Um, they trick his wife into telling him, telling them the answer to the riddle. He has to actually pay up because he lost he lost the game, basically. He goes and kills 30, 30 men. So at this point, he's actually killed more people now. Okay, And it's really interesting because growing up and the, the outlook on Samson is he's this strong warrior. Okay, And he is. Okay, I'm not disputing that. Um, it's very true he's a strong warrior. He did a lot in regards to um, shifting the balance between Israelite captivity and the Philistines. But one thing I started to think about as I was just looking over this stuff again, finally putting it all together to make this video, is I was saying to myself, this reminds me a lot of about Moses, okay? Because Samson knew, okay, 
if we just go back quickly to chapter 13, um, when the angel is actually telling his what his mum about him, okay. What does it say in verse 5 of 13? At the end, it says, and he, after she, he, the angel tells her she, he's going to be a Nazarite, it says, at the end, the back part of verse 5, it says, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Okay? It doesn't say he's going to deliver the Israelites out of the Philistines. It says he, he, he shall begin to. Okay? And I was thinking about this and saying to myself, why didn't he deliver the Israelites completely. Why was it that he's going to begin to do it? And I was thinking about this. I started thinking about Moses. Okay, not many. Well, I'll just say this: Moses was in a peculiar situation. You don't get it from Exodus, really. You get it really um, concluded for you in the Book of Acts, Acts chapter seven. Okay, when Stephen's given a long um, Bible lesson, basically through pretty much Israel's history. And what we understand from that text in Acts is that Moses knew that he was going to be the deliverer, okay? Everyone kind of gets carried away with the whole burning bush experience, and that's a video for another day. But he knew before that he was supposed to be the deliverer, okay? And what did he do when he first tried to take up the mantle? It says he killed a man, okay? And the scripture tells us he killed a man thinking that um, this is how they was going to deliver, he was going to deliver them, okay? Um, and the scripture says he killed a man and when the, the Hebrew was scared of him he said he, he, the scripture was talking about how he thought they would accept him as the deliverer but that wasn't how God wanted to deliver them out of Egypt okay? then he goes off has the burning bush experience all that kind of stuff and then comes back again the second time I was thinking about this whole context in regards to Samson okay? um, and I was thinking isn't the Nazareth vow sort of kind of making you pro prohibiting you from getting into violence if you want to stick to keeping that vow then you're not really going to be able to kill people and that kind of stuff and i started thinking about well what if he actually took that nazareth vow very seriously and he didn't just go about killing people here and killing people there would he have been able to deliver them fully out of that captivity okay that's just something to consider anyway. So he, he's killed a lion. He's not. He's come back a different on a different day, to taken honey out of the lion. Okay, um, the lion's carcass, eating himself, giving it to his parents. This time now he's killed another thirty men. Now we go into the next chapter, and there's more things um, that I want to cover basically before we get into um, the end of this video. And he smote them hip and thigh with a great slaughter, and he went down and dwelt in the top of the rock Etain, okay? And here it's basically talking about Samson now killing more people, um, which is really interesting. And we pick it up a couple verses down. It says in 15, And he found a new jawbone of an ass, and put forth his hand, and took it, and slew a thousand men therewith. So again, <coughs> The crypto says he, he found a new jawbone of an ass. So I don't know where he got that jawbone from. If he just saw it on the floor, it's from a, from a dead donkey or whatever, and he just took it. That's one thing potentially to look at. But again, it says he killed a thousand men. Okay, That's something else. So he's enamored with killing Philistines. And I'm just highlighting this to say, when you look at this opposed to the Nazareth vow, um, he really wasn't sticking to it in my opinion okay for my imagine this is one of those scenarios whenever you f you find a scenario whenever i find a scenario in the scripture and i've got really deep questions i always think about well i can't wait to get to heaven to kind of find out the full context of this whole scenario because i think these are the kind of things that really fascinate me about the scriptures now we're going to get to the crescendo of samson's <coughs> journey here at Omali. and this is really interesting because i believe it's at well, it's at this point where we see um, God step in in regards to his Nazareth vow. Now, we can take this. I'm gonna, I, I guess you generally will take it for face value. Maybe this is God indicating to us that maybe the stuff he didn't do before wasn't an, a major issue. But now this was the key issue. Um, 
But we're going to see Samson now. It looks like the peak of his powers are on, really. His hair is going to get cut off, okay? And basically what happened is he met this woman named Delilah. He basically fell in love with her. And she's pressing him daily, 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 daily. Look, tell me. Tell me what's the strength of your power. Tell me, etc., etc., etc. If you don't tell me, you don't love me, blah, blah, blah. And he goes through different situations where he's saying, oh, you know what, it's this. Oh, it's that. Oh, it's this. And every time he tells her something the scripture, in the scripture, as the scripture notes here, she tests him. And at this point, he doesn't think in his mind, it seems. Well, every time I tell her, she's actually testing this out. And when we get to verse 16 of chapter 16, look what, look what it says. And it came to pass, when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him, that his soul was vexed unto death. So he wanted to die, basically. He was that stressed. That he told her all his heart, 17, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, They have not come a razor, Upon mine head, for I am Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I will, sh and I shall become weak and be like any man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, "Come up this once, for he hath shewed me all his heart." Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. Okay, and I'll read a lot, just these two more verses and I'll wrap it here. And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head, and she began to afflict him, and strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines upon thee, Samson, this is what she did every time she tested him. And he woke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before. Okay, so this is what he did at every time. And shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. Okay, And then the Philistines are only capture him now because he's weak. It's the scripture talks about how they pluck his eyes out. Now when you, you think about this in this whole complete cont entirety. It's at this point where the scripture says the Lord um, had left him. Okay, And from that standpoint, he had done so many different things as we've kind of outlined in this video. He'd killed a lion, he'd gone back to t take fruit, honey from the carcass of a lion and give it to his parents. He had um, handled a, a jawbone, a new jawbone of an ass. He had killed a thousand people one time, killed 30 people a different time. Um, all of these different things which we look at and we say, is this in breach of his Nazarite vow? But it's at this point where he tells this woman, um, that's not even his wife that this is the strength of his power, she cuts his hair off with a razor, etc. And his power has departed him. Now, it would be complete tell and woe if that was just the end of Samson. But I'll read a couple more verses just to see kind of what happens at the end. So just to give you the backstory, there's a big feast for the Philistines. They're worshipping and thanking their gods because they've delivered Samson into their hands. And look what it says, 28. They said, bring Samson so he can entertain us, basically. And verse 28 says, And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me. I pray thee and strengthen me. I pray thee only this once, O God, that I may be, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistine for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand and the other with his left, and Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with might, and the house fell upon the Lord and upon all the people that therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than which he slew in his life. Okay, and it goes on to say that his brethren took him up, took him up and buried him, um, and how he judged Israel um, twenty years, etc. Okay, so we get loads of detail about Samson's life, his lifestyle, the decisions he made. And one thing I've kind of alluded to already, but I'll wrap up this video with it, is just God's involvement in his life, okay? Um, imagine if all of these different scenarios we've kind of covered today were signs of him breaking that Nazareth out over and over and over again. Um, at the end, we still see, after his hair's been cut off, and it, the scripture did, does say, I didn't read it, that his hair grew back a little bit, but he calls upon the name of the Lord again later on. And God actually answers him and, and gives him strength at that particular time. So I think that's really interesting just to do a kind of deep study into Samson's lifestyle, his Nazarite life. 
But also look at it from a different perspective, from God's perspective, and see that God was continually gracious to Samson. And one final thought I leave you with is, what if Samson really adhered to that Nazarite vow? Okay, and wasn't interested in killing people and all that kind of stuff. What do you think God could have done with Samson um, in order to take them to a different place in regards to um, the Israelites coming out of, of being delivered from the Philistines? Let me know below, leave a comment, and thanks to take care, and I'll see you on the next video.